Welcome to the Chemical Kim Science Show. I'm Chemical Kim, and tonight we're going to do episode two of the Chemical Kim Science Show. Of course, I'm going to need my lab coat, and no scientist would be correct if they didn't wear safety glasses. So welcome to my home lab, and we're gonna do some really cool exploration tonight, and there's an opportunity to win some prizes with some science trivia. But to start things off, before we dive deep into the really cool science that I wanna share with you, Monday is Valentine's Day. And I wanna just give you a few ideas for Valentine's Day. Are you made of CU, which is copper, and tellurium, which is TE, so get it, cute? Because you are. I think of you periodically. That's a good one. You are as sweet as a disaccharide of glucose and fructose. What could possibly be that? Hmm, maybe some sugar? You must be traveling at the speed of light because time stops when I look at you. <laughs> These are great Valentine's ideas. If you have that one science in your life, science person in your life that you want to share the love, these are some fantastic Valentines for science. My heart radiates for you, and of course that's Marie Curie, because she did work on radioactive materials, especially radium. You make space-time stand still. Oh, that's adorable. And last but not least, a hug without you is just toxic. Get it? Hug? It's HG, which is mercury, which is of course, a toxic metal. I know, I know. Too much, too much. And I could be here all night. But let's get started on the first segment, which is matter. We're going to talk about matter. That's right. And with matter tonight, I am going to bring your world all aglow. I brought in for tonight something very special. And I think you're going to really enjoy this. But to do this, we're gonna bring the lights down already to kind of start things off. We're gonna bring the lights down. And I think you're gonna know what I have once I bring over the speaker. So let me come here right into my lab. This is a glow stick. And I'm sure many of you have worked with these glow sticks or played with these glow sticks, but the question is what's inside? You know, I'm a scientist and I think the cool thing about investigating science is to actually dive deep into the chemistry as long as you do it safely. So I'm gonna show you just exactly how I did that. So look what I have here. I have, if you can see, and I know the lights are down, but I have actually taken off the top of this plastic glow stick right there. And we're gonna bring the camera in because we're gonna get a close up of, of this particular, I'll put it in this little small beaker, okay? And we're gonna do a little, a little operation. And when I cut the top off, I had to be really careful not to cut what is actually on the inside. Ah, there we go, I got it on the first try. Okay, so what you're seeing, and this is really quite fantastic, right? This is inside a glow stick and a liquid quickly came out along with a glass tube. And that glass tube has a color to it, right? And once I, get the, when, once I get it out of the tube, this just looks like an ordinary plastic tube. And in fact, we do keep a chemical inside glow sticks that keep these tubes pretty flexible so that we can break them, right? So that we can break them. So we have, yeah, so we have that taken apart. Now I'm gonna share my infographic, if we can put that up on the screen just for a second. And on the infographic, what you're looking at are, are of course the different colors of the light sticks. I actually also have an additional color that you don't see here. I brought in purple. We'll see if that one works. Okay, but we have red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. And of course, these are just the chemical compounds that are associated with those different lights that you get in a glow stick, right? Well, simple science. I know this looks really like a complex, you know, um, second level organic class, but I'm gonna keep it real simple for you. Okay, there's this compound right here that is these two compounds, the diphenyl oxalate and the hydrogen peroxide, that is what is separated from the, um, in the glow stick. Before you break them, those are two separate compounds along with the dye, right? And when I break it, 
those two mix and produce this unique one, this again, organic chemistry, one, two um, dioxid dion, and that particular compound, the one, two compound, is going to then react with the dye in a way of exciting the dye because carbon dioxide and energy are released. Carbon dioxide is the safe gas that we have in our atmosphere and it's that energy that excites the dye and then we see that glow, okay? Because this is glass, I would take a paper towel and just protect myself, okay? And I actually, let me go back here to my back lab and I do have a cutter, okay? And I'm gonna just use this cutter using the paper towel and I'm gonna break open the glass container just like that. And here's the magic. Here's the chemical reaction. And we can take off that infographic now that we can really start to demonstrate. And you can see those two coming together. Beautiful, look at that, that beautiful. Yeah, so that is, that is of course the green, okay? And I'm gonna ask and go ahead and put up on chat. So let's look at this one. And I'm not gonna tell you what color it's going to produce, but I'll use about half of it. And there's the one compound with the dye, right? And then here's the second compound, and again, Energy is going to be released, which excites the dye. And you see that beautiful color, some really simple chemistry. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That beautiful, beautiful yellow. And let's see if it gets enhanced by adding. So I separated, as you can imagine, I separated the two, the glass and, and what was inside the plastic container. Look at that beautiful. So I have this green and I have this yellow. And let's do, let's do another one, okay? Let's try this one. And I like this one because it looks like both of these liquids that I separated are pretty much the same, clear and colorless. They basically look like water. And that's what I love too about chemistry is that you'll come across doing these experiments and you'll think, wow, it's like water, but obviously it's not because water doesn't behave like this, right? So let's do a combination here and, oh, oh, I'm getting some blue. Someone said blue, fantastic. I'm just checking my, my comments. Yes, blue is a beautiful one as well. And let's see what this does make. And maybe the person that said it, which congratulations, Jonathan, you picked it. It is blue, oh, beautiful. Is that not beautiful? So this science, and I haven't even said the word of this chemistry. It's a big word, but I know you all can say it, okay? It's chem luminescence. That's what we call this. And it's basically this science of glow, and it's based off of a chemical reaction. So when I combine the chemicals, a chemical reaction takes place and light is emitted. And that's chem luminescence. There's of course other glows, but when you're doing it with a chemical reaction, it glows. It looks like blue is the winner. So many people in the chat just love that blue. Chemiluminescence is a big word, that's right. Oh, I love that you've joined me. Um, so let's look at this. Oh, I already did that color. So let's do, hmm, I don't know. Little Erlenmeyer flask or little beaker? Let's stick with the beakers. I'll do, I'll use the Erlenmeyer flask for some experimenting in a second. And let's guess what color this one will be. It already has a color to it, right? It already has a color to it. Excellent suggestion, um, HAX, to mix the colors. I'm gonna do that for you. I will be, we'll do some mixing for sure. I mean, that's, that's what experimenting is all about, trying different things. And I love that you all can ask and request and if I can do it safely, 100%, I will do it because it's great to, get that feedback and see what you would like for me to try. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so it was suggested that we mix some of the colors, which I'm going to do. But before I mix it, let's enhance the, the green. Let me add a little bit more green because I actually have quite a bit of my green 
um, solutions. So I'm just gonna increase the green quantity just to, if I'm gonna do some mixing, I always like to try and have equal quantities with my mixing, okay? So here's our beautiful green again, you ready? Let's see it, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that, okay, so it, it's so magical to be able to see these colors all together. And I even have another color which I have not revealed. So there's the beautiful, there's the beautiful red. And uh, it's kind of, I'm glad that one of my assistants suggested I hold that up to the camera because what's also really cool is that you can see that um, there's a little bit of a settlement. So the color, the liquid with the color has a little bit more of a heaviness to it, right? Um, so it kind of settles on the bottom and I didn't really even mix that one together, but maybe I'll try and give it a little bit of a mix and see, because right now it looks pink. Yep. So it looks kind of like pink, but it is actually classified as red. Um, and then here's my blue. Look at that beautiful, beautiful blue. Beautiful. Okay. And then my yellow and my green. Green looks like it's the brightest, maybe, or the blue. Those look pretty bright too. Okay. I have these two glow sticks in the warm water. Okay. So I'm going to put these into the, to the cold water. And you might have already noticed just by these two that are in the, in the warm water, but I'll hold this one up. And in the warm water, what we're finding, what, we're, what we discover is that the warm water actually speeds up the chemical reaction. So if you really want a bright glow, put it in warm water because that's going to speed up the reaction. Now, some people don't want their glow sticks to ever end. They will end eventually, but if you want to slow down the reaction, you would put it into the freezer or the fridge. But if you do want them really super bright, put them in warm water. And I'm going to show you another science trick to make them even brighter. Just wait, you're going to, it's going to blow your mind. It blows my mind all the time. Every time I do it, it's really fantastic. Okay, so a pretty cool science experiment, right? Cold water versus warm water. Definitely brighter in that warm water. Red and blue. And it's Valentine's Day. It's even though it looks kind of pinkish, but it is supposed to be red. Red and blue should make purple, right? So I'll try and mix them at equal, equal, equal concentration or equal quantities. And let's do a little swirl. It, okay, I, okay, I do see a little bit of purple. Yeah, I do. It looks like it did turn it purple. Beautiful. That is so beautiful, right? Seeing those beautiful colors mixed. Yeah, red and blue, <laughs> I was on it, I gotcha. Okay, fantastic. Well, let's try another mix, let's try another mix. Let's do, and since I have a little bit of green coloring there, I'll kind of pour that out, but let's do the green and the yellow, since I didn't do that one. My guess is that it's just gonna stay yellow, um, that the, green, the yellow's gonna dominate, but I could be wrong. So let me mix these two together and let's see what, what happens. Okay, yep, so it looks like even if I do add a little bit more green, I mean, it does lighten up my yellow a little bit, but it still looks like, you know, are you getting that on camp pretty good on camera? Okay, so it still looks like, um, you know, the yellow still dominates. And why I'm still, you know, mixing, this is all about chemistry. Oh my gosh, you have to try this at home. This is just beyond fun. Just be safe. I'm wearing safety glasses. I'm keeping myself gloved. Um, let's do the yellow and the, the blue. And the question always is like, okay, yeah, the chemistry is fun and chemistry is cool, but do I really want to waste this just to have fun? Well, I'm investigating for one thing. And then the other is I don't have to discard this. And yeah, you might think the chemical reaction ran out, but I'm going to share with you, look at the yellow dominated again. Okay. I'm going to share with you why I can still keep these chemicals and what I can do with them. Okay, so that in a sense of recycling or an application in my science. Again, the yellow dominated even with the red. Wow, yellow looks like it really took over a lot of my coloring here. It's pretty fun, it's pretty cool. And I don't know if we can get this with the camera, but I'm gonna have the camera try and get close to the inside of this beaker. Actually, let's do the larger beaker, that might be easier, okay. Can you get in there? And I'm going to pour a color and you might see the, the swirl effect that, that gets created inside that beaker. 
Do you see that? You see how it really kind of looks almost tie-dye-ish? Almost like uh, I'm making a tie-dye shirt. And so it's really unique because it really looks heterogeneous, like it doesn't want to mix. But of course I can get these to mix together. But I like that initial that it has in its combination. So that's a beautiful swirl that gets created. Really, really pretty, okay. So yeah, that, that is really kind of cool chemistry. Um, so let me just show you what I, what I mean by what I can do with these. Now, these, these are still glowing because the chemical reaction is still taking place. What I have here in my hand is a black light wand, okay? So it has a black light inside it. And I'm just gonna show you with the green dye, okay? This is the green dye that is not in the chemical reaction yet. But after it reacts, the green dye is still going to be there. The reason I show you this is because I can keep the solutions and use them for another type of science called fluorescence. And fluorescence is the glow with the black light. And I'll do another segment on fluorescence because that's just a whole topic in itself. But I don't have to throw these out. I don't have to throw them out when they're done reacting. I can keep them and do fluorescence with them. Okay, and then here's another one that, okay, it's not chemically reacting, but then you can see how it glows. Look at that beautiful glow with the black light. So I can still use these. I love that. I really love how I can, you know, recycle my, my experiments. Okay. Next is to get the glow even brighter. The little chemistry experiment that I do. Um, the way I do this chemistry experiment is when I um, had accidentally spilled a little bit of this on my hand, I felt it, or even in my glove, I feel it to be really oily, okay? The oil, right, so soap gets the grease out of a pan. So what happens if I use dish soap do you see that? Do you see how brighter it gets? And I really believe it's because of that oily material that needs to react and the dish soap brings the compounds together and they can react a lot quicker. Now again, that's not gonna last as long, but you can really see the brightness with that. So I'm gonna show you in my little tiny Erlenmeyer flask because first of all, this flask is just so incredibly cute and I love to swirl with the Erlenmeyer flask and I'm gonna combine my two solutions so you can kind of get that initial, okay? There's my initial, but watch when I add the, the dish soap. You ready? Watch how the brightness intensity, and this might even go brighter than the camera will actually pick up. It's like I'm a mad scientist, ooh, really, really cool. That is amazing when you see that experiment, okay? The intensity of the glow with adding that dish soap. So if I wanted to, yeah, speed up the reaction so it won't last as long, but really get in an intensity, let's see what happens to, to the red, okay? Let's see what happens to the red. And yeah, it brightens up my experiment. It really does. Fantastic. Okay, I said I had one color that I didn't show you yet. You ready for it? Any guesses on what color it is? Hmm, what color have I not shown? Let's see. Oh, actually, there are two colors I have not shown. Oh, are you kidding me? Let's do these together. Okay, they look very similar as the dye solution, right? As the dye solution. But let's add the activator, okay? I'm gonna do both of them at the same time. Ready? One, two, three with the activator in that one and the activator in that one. And look at that. We have a purple and we have an orange. Even though the orange still kind of looks like the red one, I'm kind of surprised. But that purple, not so bright, it's still beautiful, but not so bright. So let me enhance that by adding a little dish soap. Look at that. Okay, ready? Let's see if we can get this to be nice and bright. Look how it brightens up with that dish soap. Really, really cool chemistry. I love it, I love it, love it. Now, let's say, and you know, chemistry does have spills and 
We do get a little messy in chemistry, but let's say I accidentally spill this, okay? And, you know, in terms of cleanup, and you saw the dish soap, it will bring out the oil, you know, pull up the oil. So you can, of course, clean your surfaces with some dish soap. But I just want to show you something because I was doing some experimenting the other day and, or the other night, and I spilled some of this, okay? And I spilled it and I grabbed a paper towel. Let me move this out of the way. And I used a paper towel to pick up my spill. And look what happened to my paper towel. Where did it go? Look at this. It's like I have a glowing paper towel now. Because I transferred the, che the chemical, I transferred the chemical onto the paper towel and like you can hide it in my hand, but then I take it out and it glows. It's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. So by messiness and my experimenting, I came across some really cool effect with my light stick. Now, of course, I'm wearing gloves. Not that it's harmful to the hands, but you know, some people say it has a little bit of an irritation to the hands. But what I would always try and do, of course, is to try and e I could even save my paper towel with the dye on it and use it for fluorescence. So we're gonna put up on the screen the science that you want to get, the, the material that you wanna get, and then I'm gonna go grab it, and then we're gonna come back together and do some science together. How does that sound? So I'm in my kitchen again for episode two to do the science at home, and I need to grab some supplies that you can grab also maybe in your kitchen or in your pantry. So let's see. Ah, oh, I need the glue. That's gonna be the main ingredient. And I just happen to have some Pringles containers, some breadcrumb containers. Why? Because I need the lids. Okay, so I'm gonna use the lids off of these containers. If you don't have a lid, maybe a small tray will work. And then I'm gonna grab the food coloring and I'm going to grab a toothpick. Yeah, I know it's a skewer, but there's my toothpick. And then last but not least, I need the dish soap, which I already had over at the table, but I'll still bring it over. Okay. So I'll meet you at the table. So this science experiment is actually gonna take a couple of days for it to be completed. So I'm gonna get you started on it. But it's a really fun and easy home science experiment that you get to do with Chemical Kim and absolutely put up in chat if you have any questions as I go along with this experiment. Yes, yeah, science time, hey! Thanks, Robin. Um, but yeah, so just put up in chat if you have any questions as I go along. And it really is a pretty simple experiment, but it really is fun too, okay? And it's colorful, and we've made colors with glow lights, so why not make colors with our glue? So you're gonna take your school glue, okay? White glue works best. People have asked if you can use like clear glue or um, you know more gelled glue. I find white glue for this experiment works the best, okay? And then just pour it in the tray. Um, it looks like some of my glue got a little bit um, hardened. And what I would do is try and take those chunks out. You know, chemistry gets messy, but that's okay. But that's okay, so I'm just gonna let that glue spread on my tray, just like that. And I'll do both trays just to get me started, okay? Again, what I probably would do, but I'm just gonna take you through the steps just so you can do this, okay? Um, I would probably get out, I, I know there's like a little chunk right here, or maybe you could leave it. That could also enhance your experiment. Oh, we can turn the light on too for this if you wanna. My assistant wants to pop the light on. This might make it easier for you to see my experiment. I know we're doing all glows with it dark, but let's bring the lights up. There we go. Okay, fantastic. I love it. Okay, so look at that. I have, I have two different lids. You can do different sizes. Then you're gonna take the food coloring. So then I'm gonna add colors to the glue. And it really is dependent on how much color you want in the end because like I said it's going to take a couple of days so I'll do a little bit of the blue and then I'll do a little bit of the red so you can do this at home and in fact share with me 
send to me your picture on Instagram of your experiment and I will feature it on next week's episode. I would be more than happy to share any chemical experiments that you do. And then I'll, I think I didn't do yellow, right? Or did I do yellow? Did I do yellow or red? But we'll find out because when once we do the next step, I'll know which colors I, I missed. Now the next step, and this is where the chemistry really shines. You're gonna take the dish soap, okay? And for those of you that came last week, we did this with the same experiment with um, milk, okay? And with the dish soap, you're just gonna dab on the colors. Are you ready? Don't look away. Here we go, ready? One, two, three, dab. Okay, now, yeah, the ones that we did with the milk went a lot faster. Remember how fast the colors spread? Now this is spreading the colors, right? So the dish soap is helping, and in this case, it's polyvinyl acetate, the molecules of glue. It's allowing the food coloring to better disperse through that polyvinyl acetate. Okay, now I'm gonna go and dab on another color. Let's see what it does here, okay? And again, you can see how it spreads. And yeah, it, like I said, it is a slow spread, but be patient and you'll actually see it spreads pretty far, okay? It's, it's travel and you could even do a little experiment of seeing which color travels at a faster rate because the colors themselves are different size molecules and the larger molecules will travel slower than the smaller molecules. The smaller molecules will, will travel faster. So we can just kind of dab each color, okay? So this is getting you started. And like I said, if you're going to do this experiment, are you doing it with me? I love that. So that is fantastic if you're doing the experiment with me. Or if you do do this experiment later in the week, um, take a picture and put it up and uh, send it to me on my Instagram. You don't have to post it. You can just send it to me, Chemical Kim on Instagram, and I will feature your photo on next week's episode. And I'll give you a shout out because this is really fun science that you can do at home. And you can see I am not, I'm not cleaning my toothpick between each dab, but you can kind of see how I like to kind of get some colors mixed together there. So I have some yellow, kind of going in with the red and the green. It's beautiful, beautiful. Okay, now what you then would do is, now if you live in the north, it might be a little bit hard. So sorry, Robin, but you would put this out into the sun and let the heat of the sun warm that up and then the magic of science here we go you're going to have your final sample okay that will look like this see that and then you'll take it out of the tray oh look at that look at that beautiful beautiful product that you'll make okay yeah and it is like a piece of plastic but look at the beautiful patterns that have been created. And everyone is going to make a unique pattern based on the spread. And you can see how far those colors have spread. That's one that I've made. I've made one with a little bit more um, green and blue in this one. Yeah, so you're gonna let this dry for several days. So thanks Robin for letting me know. And yeah, um, I appreciate Robin's putting in chat. If you need that link and you need to um, send your products. It's beautiful. I want to see what you made. It's really, really cool science. And then here's another one that got a little bit darker. Okay. I did let some people do ask like, would it go clear if you just did just the glue? Um, this one, I just put a small layer of glue and you can see it doesn't go completely clear. I can kind of look through it. So I guess if you were trying to make a stained glass, you could do that without using as much food coloring. But you experiment, okay, you experiment. And yeah, some people say sun, sun catchers, absolutely. Yeah, B. Randy, you could make it a coaster or a sun catcher. I will say, people have mentioned about the coaster. Um, this does get a little soggy when it gets wet, so just be cautious with regards to doing it as a coaster. So that can be, you know, that can be an option, but um, you might have to keep remaking them if they get a little soggy. But that's the fun of it. it. Gives you an excuse to do more science. Okay. So polyvinyl acetate is the glue, and that's that food coloring spreading. And oh my gosh, look at this one. It already is forming a fantastic design. Look at that. Look at that. I might feature myself next week. 
But yeah, so send me yours and I'd love to feature it. I would really, really love to feature it. Okay, I know we're getting to the end, but we cannot forget science trivia. So I'm gonna ask my assistant to start my poll and a poll is going to go up. You're gonna see a poll go up. I just wanna say this show will only get better because of you and because of your coming and participating and being part of the science show, the Chemical Kim Science Show. Until next week, stay curious, but I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great night. Oh, I will have a follow-up question and answer on Friday night and on Monday night. So if you want to join me either one of those nights for just a sit down chat with me and any questions that you have maybe on this experiment or some other things in science, I'm looking forward to hanging out with all of you. So stay curious. I'm Chemical Kim. Until next week. Bye.